G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for Round 18's edition of Just The Tips. The season is getting away, I keep saying it every week, and uh, today we're going to go through our predictions for how Round 18 is going to play out. Just when I'd started making some progress, having a few good weeks in a row of rock solid footy tipping, not amazing, but good, I, I found myself climbing the True Footy rankings. It has all gone to shit recently, and my tipping has been diabolical, and this round was no exception. I got four correct tips. I don't think like that many people did well nobody got a correct nine uh at least in the competitions we have here at true footy and there was a lot of people who got four including some people that are bleeding the competition so i'll give myself a little bit of a break but i still didn't tip well this week so i got collingwood wrong to start the round essendon were too good for them that was a great game uh north i tipped correctly that, that one saved me a little bit the bulldogs i bravely tipped hawthorne i bravely tipped and Carlton, that tip looked good for a little bit when they got uh, however many points in front that they did and uh, eventually got steamrolled by the Giants. I got that wrong. Fremantle was a safe tip. Melbourne was a safe tip. St Kilda over Sydney was an upset um, that I got wrong. And Brisbane over Adelaide was closer than I expected, but I still got the tip correct. So that gave me four with an overall total of 91 points. Now let's go through how other people in our competitions are going. In our members tipping competition, the winner this week was Hillsley 74 with seven correct tips. So there you go. Uh, you know, even the winner in the members tipping competition got two wrong, but still well done Hillsley. It was a really tough round to tip. Uh, Rob Mack two was the overall tipping winner for the general competition with eight correct tips. So again, no perfect nine, but still outstanding tipping. The two competition leaders we have are the same this week as they were last week with Real Swift winning once again or leading once again with 98 correct tips and Chase Costa the general tipping leader with 102 that's outstanding so 11 tips ahead of me and our fantasy competition still has Tully Griffiths for however many weeks in a row he's been leading it's not, it's pretty tight at the top his average is 2073 I think the next couple are on 2060 so it's, it is still close but well done Tully for having an outstanding year of fantasy. You're well ahead of me, although I have had a few good weeks in a row. So it's time to open up Squiggle and talk about round 18. Before I do, though, if you could do me a favor, if you are enjoying the content, I would appreciate it if you did hit subscribe if you haven't already. I'm still aiming for 30,000 subscribers by grand final day and uh, would really need some help to get there. It would be much appreciated. So the round kicks off with uh, what could be game of the round to begin with, uh, Collingwood versus Geelong. Imagine a big crowd for this game. Collingwood coming off uh, two losses in a row against the Gold Coast Suns first and then Essendon um, on a Friday night game at the MCG as well. So they got the seven days to recover. And uh, again, probably just not looking quite at the same pace they were previously. I was watching the round so far, I think, on the weekend, and Riley Beveridge was going through some stats in the last seven weeks for Collingwood, and they only have beaten their opponent in several stats, like once or twice. So disposals, contested possessions, inside 50s, I think, was another one of them. So the point being there is, even though they've actually probably won more than they've lost, absolutely, in the last seven weeks, the profile hasn't really been of a winning team, and we've seen them to drop two in a row. Essendon is a pretty good team, though. Give them credit for that. So Geelong, on the other hand, beat Essendon, like a fortnight ago. And it's, they've put in two really good weeks in a row against Hawthorne and most recently at GMHBA, and they seem to have snapped out of this funk that they've been in. Now, I don't really want to discount Collingwood here, but you'd have to say Geelong start favourites here. And even though it's probably more of a home ground advantage for Collingwood, I have lost a little bit of faith. They're looking shaky over a couple of months now, and the Cats might have just figured their stuff out. So, I'm going to have to tip the Cats here. I think they will win. I'm not 100% confident because Collingwood is Collingwood. And, you know, in a big occasion like this, you give them a chance. But nonetheless, Geelong by four goals, I'll say 25 points. Hawthorne versus Fremantle. Tassie, this is so hard to tip. I want to tip both teams, to be honest. Hawthorne had a bit of a reality check on the weekend. I just talked about their loss against Geelong. Lost by about 50 points without James Sicily in that team. Now... They had been so good for a couple of months there in a row, and this was the first blip. Now, will it just be one strike of lightning where they have a really bad day and then go back to their better form, or is this the start of a slump? It's hard to really ascertain that. And Fremantle, on the other hand, are looking red hot at the moment. So last week they beat Richmond. You kind of expect them to beat Richmond. That's not uh, the really compelling performance, but of course beat Sydney in Sydney the week before that. And generally, are certainly, well, they're third on the ladder, and that's probably reflective of how good they've been. This is going to be tricky though. Down in Tassie, I feel like Hawthorne are a tricky customer. So looking at the head-to-head -head here, when was the last time they played in Tassie? So in 2021, Fremantle slapped them there. In 2019, Hawthorne beat them uh, by five goals. Now, that's really not a lot of data to go off, and both of those sides haven't been great in that stretch, with Fremantle making the finals in 2022. But between the two sides, that's it. So I was kind of hoping for some sort of 
trend where one team was going to smash the other at this ground. This is a tricky one. I think at the end of last year, Fremantle beat them heavily at the MCG, but I think this Hawthorne side has definitely gone up a gear. So is Fremantle though. To be honest, I think my gut is actually telling me Fremantle here, but I don't know. I feel like Hawthorne could win a close one. I think I'm going to go Fremantle. I think I decided before this video I'd go Hawthorne, but I think I'm going to go with Fremantle in a tight game. Let's say 11 points to the Dockers. Sydney versus North Melbourne at the SCG. Now, a few weeks ago, this would have looked like the most one-sided contest in the league, um, with Sydney being as good as they were on top and North Melbourne at the time being bottom of the ladder. But things have changed. First of all, Sydney's dropped two on the bounce. They've lost a one-point loss to Fremantle. Then they lost by two points to St Kilda. A little bit inaccurate, but nonetheless, I think St Kilda played really well. And they've dropped two on the bounce. Conversely, North Melbourne coming off their second win of the season with a four-point victory over the Gold Coast Suns. And that caps off a four- or five-week stretch where they've looked much improved. So I don't think they will have the same fears about this game that they would have five weeks ago. I think these two teams are converging at a good time for North Melbourne. Having said that, having said that, this is still going to be a massive ask, right? I think... There's a lot to like about the way North are playing at the moment, and their young guys are driving a lot of that improvement too. And Sydney have looked a little shaky, but they still, you know, they, they haven't like been really poor, which is worth considering. And I think, oh, I think I'm going to go Sydney, but I'm, I'm not brave enough to tip North, but I don't think this will be a belting. I'll say like six goals. We'll go Sydney by 37 points. And I think all in all, that's not a bad result for North considering the latter positions of these two teams. Western Bulldogs versus Carlton. Ah, oh, so so annoying tipping the Bulldogs. Like, they they could win this, but at the same time, they're coming off a really poor loss against Port Adelaide, and their best form they look good. It's when their midfield gets on top that they are dangerous, and they're one of the better clearance sides in the competition, and and got some stars in that team naturally. But when they don't, like we saw against Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide's midfield ran riot. The Bulldogs really didn't have much of an answer. Now. The Carlton are coming off a loss, no doubt. They lost to the Giants by two goals in Sydney. But as far as midfield firepower goes, I can't imagine Carlton's midfield getting beasted, which I think it would require for the Bulldogs to win this game. Uh, I think I can, I can foresee an annoying Bulldogs upset here, but I don't think they've earned my tip this week. I'm annoyed that I tipped them last week and they lost to Port so badly. I think Carlton will win this. I think Carlton's lost. They can shake off. I think GWS played well. Orange Tsunami is back, etc., etc. Um, but I don't think Carlton are showing too much weakness. I say Carlton win this by 26 points. Melbourne versus Essendon at the MCG. Just looking at it quickly, these two sides have not met this year. I didn't think they had. Essendon beat them at uh, Gather Round last year. So a bit removed from that for a start. Also not the venue that I was looking for. Melbourne have generally won a lot of these last encounters. I think it's a little bit tricky looking at it that way. Essendon made finals in 2021. Melbourne were premiers that year. Other than that, Melbourne, Essendon haven't been a good team and Melbourne generally have. Now we're looking at a different point in time where Essendon is fifth and Melbourne is ninth. Now, talking about Melbourne for a second, they, they've looked a little bit improved over the last couple of weeks. Obviously, well, they beat North. That wasn't a particularly good performance. Then they went to the Gabba, played well and lost. And then it out, outclassed an Eagles side that's rubbish at the moment. Nonetheless, I still think Melbourne have gotten back into form a little bit. There's definitely no doubt about that. The last two weeks have been improved. Essendon, on the other hand, last fortnight, lost to Geelong. Maybe a bit of a chink in the armor, you think. Oh, is Essendon really good? And then they beat Collingwood. And then Geelong also play well as well, which makes me think, um, you know, that isn't necessarily the beginning of any kind of Essendon decline. I think this side has matured. Uh, this will be a tough game. I think Melbourne on their day are better than ninth. Um, and on their off days, they're way worse than ninth. Uh, I suppose that reflects the current ladder position. So who do we trust more in this game? I think it's a bad time to play Melbourne, relatively speaking. Like It would have been better to play them a month ago. So I don't expect this to be a poor version of Melbourne. That being said, I think Essendon, who were very good against Collingwood, you know, Merritt and Jai Caldwell in particular, adding a real different look to that midfield and Dersma's impacting and Nate Caddy looks like a future star. I think uh, there's a lot to like about the Dons. I'm going to tip them. I think they've earned my tip this week and it will be a crushing blow for Melbourne. I could get this wrong. I'm not fully confident because Melbourne on their day can be good, but I don't trust them. And I'm going to say Essendon, who have earned my trust, will win by 18 points. Can I just say how funny it is to look at this ladder as we look at Adelaide versus St Kilda. Look at Adelaide's percentage. It's sitting in the bottom four with 102.6%. Look at who is fourth, Essendon, with 101.2%. This is so strange. So let's talk about this game. Adelaide coming off a loss against the Lions at the Gappa. Pretty good performance, and they beat the Giants the week before. So I think they're in some decent form. 
they did just lose Rankin for a month uh, with his suspension. At least that was the latest update that I have. I don't know if it'll be appealed, but you can assume he's not going to be playing in this game. So that works against them. And the Saints are coming off a good win against the Swans at Marvel Stadium where their pressure really clamped down on Sydney and were able to you know, negate the way they play really well. They also have no Max King, which is uh, worth noting, but they did have no Max King when they beat Sydney as well. Home ground advantage here makes me want to tip the Crows. Uh, I think last year, I just wanted to double check that. Yeah, so they played in round nine when St Kilda had made a really good start to the year and Adelaide slapped them. That being said, the year before that, St Kilda beat the Crows. And again, Adelaide is such a hard team to project at the moment. I think the last couple of weeks has been better. I think the home ground advantage makes me want to tip the Crows here, but St Kilda have improved slowly. I even think back to their Gabba loss against the Brisbane Lions. They looked a little bit better, looked a little bit more dangerous. They scored 106 points. Uh, it's, it's, I feel harsh not tipping the Saints because they played well, but I think the Crows at home should win. I think if the Crows can beat the Giants and really take it to the Lions, I think at home they'll be too safe. I think at Marvel I'd be thinking differently. Let's go the Crows by 20 points. The Gold Coast Suns versus Port Adelaide at uh, Metricon or Heritage Bank or People's First, whatever it's called. The Suns continuing this crazy season of eight home wins, eight away losses, and most recently coming off a loss to North Melbourne. Before that, they beat Collingwood at Metricon. So their form line has just been, well, it's been incredibly predictable in a way. Uh, Port Adelaide, on the other hand, had a really good win over the dogs where their midfield got right back into form. I already talked about that. Butters, Rosie, and Wines, to some extent, also went large. And that might be the circuit breaker. The week before that, they had a unconvincing win over the Saints. But if Port Adelaide were to beat the Gold Coast Suns at this ground, they would be the first time a team to do it. And some good teams have gone up there and lost. Notably, if you look at the ladder, fourth went up there and lost. Geelong went up there and lost in fifth. They also beat Collingwood, who has been a pretty good team. They also beat Hawthorne, who has been in a good team. But mind you, that was a uh, part of the season where Hawthorne weren't playing well. Either way, Port Adelaide would still be the first team, among some very good ones, to claim a win at this ground. Now, it's hard because I think Port Adelaide might have just got a bit of momentum back and the Gold Coast will be disappointed. On the other hand, Gold Coast might take some inspiration, I suppose, from Damien Hardwick's comments and... Maybe it's time for them to respond and grow up like he says. I, I don't know who to tip here. I think I'm going to go with the Gold Coast Suns. I think I am. Two relatively strong midfields in this game. Oh, at home, I just think Gold Coast have kind of earned that to some extent, which is famous last words for footy tipping, but I'll say Gold Coast by 17 points. Richmond versus GWS. Um, Richmond, yeah, again, just coming off a 50-point loss against Fremantle. Um, you know, didn't play badly. I thought their clearance game really worked. After quarter time, they smashed Fremantle in clearances and Fremantle the best team in the league in, in clearances. So that's something to be taken from that. Um, they've got a home game here at the G against GWS. Now, GWS have been a little bit up and down themselves. They went to Adelaide Oval and lost, and then they beat Carlton, which, you know, is a very, very good win. I don't think the Giants are too bad at the G. Um, well, it was only last year they nearly made the grand final with their prelim performance. So I don't know how much to analyze here. If GWS should win, like it would be a big boil over if Richmond won. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen, but it, you'd be a brave man to tip it. So I'll say the Giants win this by, yeah, we'll go five goals, but yeah, you never know. Oh, West Coast versus Brisbane Lions. Fantastic. West Coast uh, been poor for six weeks now. Really disappointing against Hawthorne and then slightly less disappointing against Melbourne and a lot of negativity and pressure and being thrown at Adam Simpson right now. It'll be interesting to see the response. You know, sometimes it galvanizes a team. It did last year, late in the year when the Eagles rolled the Bulldogs at Marvel um, or it could have the opposite effect where they decline and fall into a shit heap. And I mean worse than the shit heap has been currently. Brisbane have been a very good team over the last little stretch and were challenged by Adelaide last week and the week before that, I think they smashed Port Adelaide. That was the week before, right? Um, really good, strong run of form. This will be seen as an opportunity to get their season back on track and I mean really elevate themselves close to that top four. They don't have much margin for error here, so I can't imagine Brisbane don't take this game seriously as much as West Coast are not a strong opponent. This is the first time these two sides have ever met at this ground, which is insane considering this ground has existed for seven seasons now. Uh, without too much more deliberation, the Brisbane Lions should have a healthy 50-point win. Anything less than that will be an improvement for West Coast. So there you have it, guys. That is my take on round 18. Let's go through the ladder. So we still have the same top three. Uh, in fact, we still have the same top five. 
That is correct. I'm just cross-referencing it with the actual ladder. Brisbane move up one spot. GWS move down one spot. Collingwood slumped to 11th. That's two, down two spots from where they currently are. Melbourne stay in the same spot, assuming they lose to Essendon, which I'm not completely convinced about, but you never know. Bulldogs drop a spot. Other than that, the bottom five, no. St Kilda, Leapfrog, Adelaide as well. And other than that, it stays the same. So you've really got the bottom three teams locked into that bottom three now. Assuming Adelaide beats St Kilda, that would give them a three-win margin over West Coast. But I think we already kind of knew that, right? So there you have it, guys. Let me know in the comments section hey, what you thought of my tips, uh, what you agree with, disagree with that I've said in this video. Let me know your own tips, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.